Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Greetings, I'm Jeff Ross, and I'm one of the associate pastors of the Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for tuning in to this uh, worship service, and uh, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity that we have to uh, hear your word. God, let your Holy Spirit just descend upon us that we may... Uh, hear your voice in the midst of these, these scripture passages and the words that I'm about to share. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes from Psalms chapter 104 verses 24 to 34. And it says, How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There are ships that go to and fro, and a leviathan which you formed to frolic there. All creatures look up to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. We pray God's blessing on these words and uh, ask God to guide us through this time together. Well, again, uh, welcome. This is Pentecost. You see the red pyramids and stoles, and uh, this is the, uh, uh, some say, the birthday of the church. And so uh, we celebrate on this Pentecost Sunday. A traditional scripture reading for this Sunday would be the second chapter of Acts, uh, where the Holy Spirit descends upon the uh, disciples that are gathered in the weeks after Jesus' death and resurrection uh, and ascension. Uh, and so we'll get to that, but I uh, wanted to start with this passage in Psalms because it talks of the Holy Spirit. It talks about how we might understand the Holy Spirit uh, and, and kind of gives us a guide uh, to that. So uh, Psalm 104, to me, is a blast. Uh, the writer 
sounds like he or she has just discovered the world all over again. If you go back to the beginning uh, of the, the Psalm 104, uh, the, the writer says, God, you are great. You are awesome. And then the writer seems to go around and just notice everything. Uh, the writer says, light, wow, that's a cool thing. And clouds, whoa, those are awesome. And water down below, how it separates everything. That's incredible. And over there, look, oh my gosh, mountains. Mountains are the best. And then he goes through a kind of an odd list of things that they notice. Donkeys. And then wild donkeys. I don't know why they're fascinated with donkeys, but then birds and grass and cattle and how they all interworked with one another. And then in verse 15, if you go back to that, the, the writer says, wine. Oh my gosh, what a great thing. Uh, I know that many of you would say the same thing. I love that the writer talks about wine. Maybe in the way that this is all framed out, they've had a little too much of the wine uh, today. But the writer continues and says, trees, oh my gosh, storks, goats, moon, darkness, sun, and light, and, and seems fascinated by all these different components uh, of the, the world. And even in the scripture that we read just a minute ago, uh, it says the Leviathan, which God created to frolic in the ocean. The Leviathan, if you uh, Google that, is, is kind of a big sea monster uh, that they believed in at that time. So maybe, maybe we should start our day like that. Um, maybe we'd have a little bit more joy if we went around the room and said, a table Oh my gosh, and a chair to go with the table, that's genius. And carpet and a TV, and oh look, there's a coffee maker. Coffee is the best. So all of that leads to verse 30, where I want us to kind of zero in and focus uh, today. Verse 30 says, when you send your spirit, we are created and renewed. And so there's a key word there that I want us to, to spend a little time on today. When you send your spirit. Um, that's what I want us to ponder on this Pentecost Sunday. When you send your spirit. The writer of the psalm has already expressed great joy uh, in our world, and some might even say is living in the Spirit. They're caught up in a relationship with God, an appreciation of what God has done, not really asking for anything, just uh, kind of in worship or at the end of the, the psalm that we read, uh, kind of singing or in a meditation type of posture. Uh, they're just appreciating what they have uh, and not demanding anything else. And so that's why this uh, idea, especially over the years of the Holy Spirit and Pentecost and how all that works, uh, has gotten a little off track because we humans uh, don't, uh, aren't really comfortable with this idea of just an abstract when. The writer says, when you sp send your spirit. Well, especially today, we, we want to know more than that. We want it to be more predictable. We want it to be more defined. We want sort of a, a recipe. Uh, we want to know how to conjure up this spirit. Oftentimes, we're not comfortable, as the writer seems to be, just enjoying the life that we have. Uh, and so in the church, we read about these experiences, incredible experiences down through history where the Spirit of God has done amazing things, where uh, uh, it's been disruptive or uh, life-changing. Uh, maybe we've experienced something like that in our lives, and we want to recreate that over and over. We want to know the formula for how to do that. Uh, my wife, Sherry, loves to cook. She is a great cook. And so uh, we watch a lot of cooking shows and baking contests and Chef John and uh, different people that she likes to follow. 
And when we uh, watch uh, somebody creating uh, some recipe, they'll always have a link below uh, where you can print that recipe off. And the recipe is helpful because it says, here's the utensils or the equipment that you'll need. Here are the ingredients. Here is how much of each of those ingredients you'll add. Here is when to add those ingredients. Here's how to mix them together. Uh, here's the temperature to set the oven to. Here's how long uh, to let the item sit in the oven. Uh, and then at the end, here's a picture of what it should look like. Uh, the, the recipes and these shows are nice and neat and orderly. And if you follow the directions, the recipe, uh, you'll be able to create something that looks like that. And that's part of our society today, isn't it? We want to know the steps, the 10 steps to this, the five steps to that. Uh, especially those among us that... Uh, are somewhat of an engineer or an architect or an administrator. We like things uh, that we can uh, duplicate or, or follow, things that make sense. But when Psalm 104 says, when, when you send your spirit, it's not followed by a set of instructions. The closest thing we have is Acts chapter 2 that we talked about a few minutes ago uh, where the Holy Spirit comes uh, as promised by Jesus to be the helper uh, um, in the church. Uh, chapter 2 verse 1 of the book of Acts says this, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Now, over the years, that verse has been uh, pretty problematic for the recipe people <laughs> in our midst. Because in that recipe of sorts, the only thing we can uh, do ourselves is to come together in one place and to sit. That's all that we are able to control, and that's frustrating uh, because everything else is left up to God. Uh, the sound of a blowing or violent wind came from heaven, uh, the, the Scripture says. Uh, and we can't do that. We can't make that happen. We can't summon that. Uh, there's nothing that we can do uh, that makes God act in a particular moment or space or time. Only God can do that. So when the, the psalmist says, when, and we say, when, we, 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 we have to pause. We have to wait on God. And for some of that, for some of us, that's, that's frustrating. Uh, and the Spirit of God is kind of like that, we find. That uh, it's God's act and work in the world. Uh, it's not always when and where and how we want it. Recently, this was demonstrated, I think, powerfully uh, at Asbury Seminary in Wilmore, Kentucky. Uh, in the middle of me uh, February, uh, there was a worship service, and at the end of the worship service, most folks left, and a few folks stayed at the altar and began to pray. Uh, and after lunch, the band came back to collect their uh, instruments and pack things away, and the people, there was a, just a handful of folks still at the altar praying. So the band decided to play uh, as kind of background to what was taking place. And over the next two weeks, this revival, uh, powerful event where folks testified of great uh, 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 experiences of the Holy Spirit of God in their midst and the feeling when you walked in there uh, was constant for the next two uh, weeks. At the end of the two weeks, the, the school, Asbury, decided to kind of wrap this up. 
uh, because Wilmore, Kentucky is a small town and people were coming from everywhere, thousands of people descending upon Wilmore, I think in part to see and to appreciate what was going on, but I also think in part to try to figure out what was taking place so they could write down the formula and then take it back to their place. Uh, because that's what we do, right? We write a book about it, a documentary. We say, this is how you do it, uh, and, and take it wherever we go. Um, and so they tried to do that. And to my knowledge, in, in searching and reaching and, and looking, n- nobody's been able to do it. Now, there's some good things. People have been able to go back to their place and talk about revival and how it works and, and how they could uh, uh, pray for it. And I'm sure there is some benefit uh, to having those discussions in different places. But nobody was able to take... Uh, uh, any sort of formula from Asbury, take it back to their school or their church or their place and duplicate what happened. So the the question that arises for some people is, what was going on at at Asbury? Again, because we're trying to break this down, analyze it. Look, were, were the students at Asbury better? Were they more holy? Were they more devout? Were they more special? Were they more blessed? Did they make better marks in their theology courses? Uh, Were they more spiritual? It would be nice to know uh, and answer that, but I'm sure the answer to that is no. They're no different than students at a Christian college, most anywhere else in the country. But we do want that kind of recipe. Uh, And people have tried and tried to analyze it. And the problem is that when the Spirit of God moves, when, and and we don't control that, we'd like to. Shortly after deciding that I was going to pursue the ministry, but still not really sure what that meant, I was a a senior uh, in college, and um, I was in my dorm and I was watching a, a Christian TV program and the, the preacher said, hey, when we come back from the break, we're going to help you receive the Holy Spirit. We'll show you, walk you through the steps of that. And so my ears per- uh, perked up because I wanted, genuinely, I wanted everything that I was going to need to be a minister. I didn't know really what that looked like or or what was going to happen, but I wanted all the tools in my tool bag. Uh, And so I paid attention, I listened, and when the preacher came back, the preacher said, to receive the Holy Spirit, put your hands on the television and pray, and uh, continue to pray, and then you'll begin to just start speaking in tongues. And so I thought, okay. That sounds pretty easy, and I'm glad they have a formula for how this works. So I did that. Uh, and after a while, nothing happened. And, and I began to think, just like the questions before, well, there's something wrong with me. I don't have enough faith. Uh, I'm not spiritual enough. What do I need to do? And it was at that point that, that I felt like God sort of chuckled and said, Jeff, Jeff, take your hands off the TV. Look, uh, finding your path, finding spiritual gifts, uh, opening yourself up to God isn't an obstacle course. I haven't made it difficult. Just know that you have everything that you need, and I'll guide you the whole way. Uh, And I I heard that voice and felt that feeling in a powerful way. and, and um, I'm sure that that preacher was helpful to a lot of people, but I don't think there's a formula for how to control God and make all these things happen. And if we go through the Bible, actually, we don't really see formulas. Everybody is so different in their experience of God, and not only in the Bible, but in Christian tradition. Gideon was nothing like David. Deborah was completely different than Ruth. Abraham was clearly not Moses. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, was really theologically uh, very different than John Calvin. Uh, 
John Newton, who wrote Amazing Grace, had a horrible, destructive early part of his life, while St. Francis uh, was pretty much of a saint his, his whole life. So when does God send God's Holy Spirit? How, how can we count on that? What do we need to know as we gather together on this Pentecost Sunday? We want to know how to bring the Spirit. But I think that part of that is our need to control things. I think it has to do with our desire to be God. We don't want to be the people of God. We want to be the God of people. And we like to be in charge. We like it that way. So when God says, when God sends His Spirit, actually, we just have to wait. And, and that's what I like about this psalm, as we read earlier. It ends by saying, I will sing and I will meditate. Because I believe, really, that's the best that we can do. I think the best that we can do is exactly a, approach life uh, the way this psalmist seems to. Oh my gosh, a cloud. That's awesome. Thank you, God. Oh my gosh, look, mountains. Uh, those are incredible. I, I'm not in control of when God is going to do something spectacular. The only thing that I can control is my attitude and my heart, developing the gifts of the Spirit uh, that God asks us to, not seeking a formula to be able to channel uh, the Spirit of God, but to live a life that becomes the gospel, to live a life of faith and of hope and of joy and of expectation, and of renewal. And, and really, that, that's enough for me. And then from time to time, Pentecost comes. And from time to time, events like happened at Asbury happen, and we can rejoice. Let us pray. God, thank you for your spirit. And I pray, God, that you will send your spirit uh, on us, on your church, on your people, on our world. Uh, you know that, that we need that. We need your spirit to come and recreate and renew and give strength to people, give hope uh, in a world that seems to have lost its way. We need people of hope and of joy to share that faith and to shine that light in our world today, God, help us, guide us in grabbing hold of your spirit that is within us and letting it shine as we stand back out of the way. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. 
That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir, an organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.